News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a joy good morning to you. This is Newsline Live. We're broadcasting from the News First studios in Dorset Street in Colombo. And uh, apologies for the slight late start. Um, now then, in this sea of uh, constitutional amendments being proposed and so on, and uh, with a view towards uh, uh, investigating, discussing that uh, in at some depth, we have with us uh, today a gentleman who's uh, come here all the way from Jamaica in the beautiful West Indies. And of course, uh, he is uh, Dr. Pratibha Manama Hema. Very good morning to you, Doctor. Very good morning, Farasa. Uh, you know, the, the Dean uh, at uh, the uh, Faculty of Law sure. at the, uh, well, the University, University of, of Technology yeah. in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, it really is the beautiful West Indies, isn't it? Sure. Um, now then, before we start our discussion, uh, may I offer you a cup of tea? Yeah, I love Sri Lanka tea. Yes, and but Caribbeans they, also love Sri Lanka. Do they? Do yes, they? Definitely. Perhaps we should. Do you think we can have Jones tea in the Caribbean? Definitely. May I pour you some tea? Sure. May I warmly invite you, as the with, ambassador from Sri Lanka, with with to, tea, with tea, right. to come to Jamaica, Kingston, okay. and then we can introduce. They, they always love Sri Lanka tea. But wonderful. We don't have Sri Lanka tea. We sh we will yeah. we will send definitely. Uh, Mr. Jones himself, yeah. too. Seventeen countries are there in the Caribbean. Ah. They love Sri Lanka. We will send, we will make sure that we sure, do that. Definitely. Now then, uh, I, what I wanted to ask you, um, Dr. Uh, Pratibha, is this. That, you know, in, in Sri Lanka, as you know, there are various proposals being put forth yeah. about uh, uh, adjusting, amending the Constitution. So therefore, my, my question to you is, with the constitutional amendments being proposed, mm. is Sri Lanka risking a scenario of what they call the tyranny of the majority? That is what my question to you is. I don't think so. What the constitutional proposed amendment 21st and 22nd to bring the originality. Originally, it was 12.5%. Yeah. And Honorable President Premadasa's period yeah. to satisfy certain parties, it reduced to 5%. Right. But now, once again, Dr. Vijidas Rajapaksha's proposed amendment trying to introduce the originality. Right. Because rather than looking the theory for us, you have to see the practical aspects of Sri Lanka. Mm. Four and a half years we suffered. You say democracy, good governance. What happened to the country? Finally, what was said by former President Sirisena, openly said, 19th Amendment crushed down the system. So that's why 70 lakhs people decided to have a strong system, strong presidential system. Not only 70 lakhs, 55 lakhs, 3 lakhs, 50,000, all agreed for the executive president. So therefore, I think now the whole Sri Lanka to run as a system, the closest country to me, Cuba, how they develop, and also Singapore. You can see many countries. You may say this is not the democracy. I, I don't agree majority and minority. I think all should work together. Yeah. All are Sri Lankans. Now see hospitality of Sinhalese and Tamils. They will work together. So you try to put this 5%, what? To get the support of another party. But Surely, um, I, I hear what you say. However, surely we must have some built-in, inherent checks and balances Definitely. because democracy doesn't mean that it is majority rule at the expense of the minorities. Certainly, democracy is driven by majoritarianism, but yep. there is a difference. You can't be trampling over the minorities because if you do that we then come to a area which is your speciality human rights definitely you can't are we are we saying that we need development and so on at the expense of human rights my direction my path is totally different 1978 constitution chapter 3 fundamental rights are clearly protected so 
if you think the minorities we are giving some disadvantage, I do not think so. Article 12 1, non discrimination principle is there. So, what the but these are all for us proposed amendments. You need a dialogue, you need a debate, you need to discuss this. But I think it is a good time period. Even this 5 percent were introduced. Remember, yes. there are election period those days. Yes. But here you have 3 to 4 months. Let us discuss this and have a strong parliament to support the president policies. Otherwise, yes. once again, if you give a hang parliament, it is for the majority, it is for the minority, all people has to suffer. To have that system, you must have checks and balances. So the checks and balances, I also propose 23rd amendment should be introduced to give a bill of rights and give strength for the fundamental rights chapter. Mm -hmm. It has not introduced it. So my argument, rather than 21st, 22nd, and there must be a, another amendment to introduce all these strong fundamental rights. If you introduce that, even their rights are protected. Why we are suffering like this? Certain extremist parties are there. They want to get that and show the parliament, okay, without our support, mm. you can run the system. Yes. Marxist parties never believe parliament. Marxist parties, there is a concept called revolution. Mm. So why they are, you know, uh, campaigning against this? So are they believing parliament or are they believing revolution? That is the thing in Colombia and other countries we have seen. Mm -hmm. Even Venezuela, I have seen it. So therefore, these Marxist parties, only parliament, they take as a platform. Even Rona Vijayvira, former JP leader, he said that they don't believe this parliament system. Mm -hmm. So I mean, at least for a shorter period, at least for a shorter period, to develop this country, you must support the president policies, president principles, and back up by a parliament system. But, but, the, but the minorities, um, I, I, I'm talking about the minority parties, yeah. like I'm not holding a brief for the yeah. JVP, but they will be the most affected by this. Um, uh, it's almost clear that they will be. The, the reason is that people like the SLMC and ACMC and so on, they will receive their votes from their areas anyway. But the JVP doesn't have one particular area. They have a, the whole country. And so uh, smaller countries will have, a prop, uh, smaller Party. parties will have uh, a particular problem. And don't you think that that is not very fair? I don't think so. Or, or is it that the even, development yeah. overrides all that? Uh, even Jatik uh, Hello Rumea and there are other parties yes. also. Yeah. I mean, they can act as pressure groups. They can pressurize. Even this 12%, if they are so powerful, rather than thinking about this 5% one, if they work hard, if people believe alternatives, people will support them. Mm -hmm. So what my argument is, not only this 21st Amendment, later we can discuss the 22nd Amendment also. So the 21st Amendment, why it was introduced to have a strong parliament to back up with president policies. And not only that, not only that, most of the things were failed last time. Why they, they were failed? You can see if you analyze president, uh, former president Sirisena's period and how former prime minister acted. The theory is beautiful. Mm. But when it comes to practical scenario, the whole cabinet can control the president. Even the president come with the majority votes. Mm -hmm. But they try to put as a nominal president. President's hands were tied up in the cabinet That's most true. of the time. Yeah. So you can't run that system. So I mean in a simple version, this should be there. But and there, even, even <coughs> give me one minute. Yeah. Many countries, this is we are preferential votes. In all Caribbean countries, there is nothing called preferential votes. There are other parties also. You can discuss uh, not so, only Sri so the, parties. In the system, there's first past the post. First past post, and they run beautifully. Even the education minister, now he was arrested, and he was in prison for taking bribes. Tell me any minister which has been arrested. All mm -hmm. become sick people when the police is coming, and they go for the luxury uh, hospitals. What is this? And even Honorable Jayalalitha was arrested, and former telecommunication minister India was arrested but not a single one. That's why this 
legal system also there are a lot of loopholes. We have to correct this. Otherwise, they may become jolly good people. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in between all this, yep. um, we must bear in mind that if we disable or cancel out the 19th Amendment, it is not, the 19th Amendment isn't all flawed mm. because there were some good aspects of it yeah. and there were some that were not acceptable and are not acceptable. Mm. So what are you saying? Are you, do you uh, propose a return to um, the removal of the two-term limit for a president? My argument, first I'll come to the commissions and then I'll come for the term period. Now see, beautifully worded all these commission. Mm. Now, let's analyze who appoint these people to the commissions. There is a constitutional council. Yeah. But there is a big argument. The constitutional council also yeah. actually not independently worked. All these people were appointed backed by very strong NGO characters. And you can see how they were appointed. Mm. So therefore, I think even black and white letters, these commissions are there. Practically, it has not happened. Most of the commissions, one or two is there. We can give some examples. Others, they were acting according to a certain agenda. Yeah. So that's why president needs even appointing judges. This issue is there. Yeah. And also this term period. Yes. Now you know what happened in China. Now, China, lifetime, lifetime presidency was given for Xi Jinping president. Why? People need that. That's why China is developing rather very fast movement way. Even in Caribbean countries, Chinese investments are there. So, that's why people think in the way. I think at least three-year period, enough for the presidency. You have to remove two-year period. Three-year period you can give. So then you can have a development up to that period. And thereafter, another person can take up. So this is where 18th Amendment, see the 19th Amendment, and compare, analyze, and come to a mid-level. So that yeah. is very, very important. But immediately you can't come. Because there is a process. There is a due process. For this due process, majority of people are endorsed that. That's why when President address the parliament, if you can analyze his speech, he clearly say that what they need to have a developed society in Sri Lanka. Otherwise, what will happen? It can become a disaster. But let's let's put this scenario, and yeah. thank you for your questions. We encourage it by SMS, please. 0772-300-305. Now then, here is, uh, here's one of the questions that came through already. Um, MR had a two-thirds majority with the support of MPs crossing over, of course. Yeah. And Maitri had a shorter term and was lost uh, with the choice, but lost, even though he, had, he was the choice of the people. When you compare both, they both lost. Uh, but what have you to say? Which one was better? Uh, I think MR period was better. Right. Why I say that? In the second period, Sirisena's period, what happened? President Sirisena's period. Yeah. It was actually tied up by certain people surrounding him and also some parties call this national government. This national government, actually they were promoting, I'll take only one point, reconciliation and rehabilitation. Was that happened? No. And how many officers and how many officials were there to run this system? Mm. But finally, we have seen with the East attack and all, where was the reconciliation? So I mean, in my period, it was better national security. And also, please read the East attack report, parliament report, mm. and it was in the UNP regime. Number one, there must be strong national security for Sri Lanka. So that's why the eight recommendation, please, if you see the eight recommendation, I like the first one and second one, and economic strength. So these two also say, we must have a strong system. So we had that system, but it was liberalized, it was dismantled, and most of these intelligence people and also these army people were arrested. Thereafter, this system collapsed. And even, and even you know what happened in the Security Council. 
nothing and mm. 97 times they have given the information so if you analyze all this system we can see number one priority for this country is national security and you have to strengthen for that the president must give powers well i've i've got a counter to this but yeah. uh, before i do that let me offer you why don't you have a sip of your jones tea Thanks. it's it's Thanks. quite good tea, yeah, yeah, i think yeah. i think very strong indeed now well, that's actually very good. Yeah, very um, <laughs> Now then, I hear what you say, that yeah. you said that, you know, the MR term was better than the other term. Yeah. But at what cost? Corruption was endemic. The cost overruns on projects was amazing and never before uh, experienced. It went to new heights. Uh, we had development, yes, yes, but nobody... And, and sadly, the Sirisena Wickramasinghe government didn't get very far in looking into the corruption that they themselves alleged that happened in, under the Rajapaksa I administration. Instead, they robbed the central bank themselves. But what I'm trying to say is, do you, don't you think that we have to strengthen the rule of law, first of all? Agreed. Fully agreed. Endorsed. When you compare the corruption as well as bribery, Sirisena Vikramasinghe period was huge things were there. Health ministry. Now see what happened to the poor drugs, the poor people who consume these cancer drugs, yeah. how much they have taken, uh, and the ministers, massive amount they have taken. So you can't compare MR period, corruption was high, Sirisena Vikrama Singh period is less. The high period, you know what happened in the central bank. So I mean, you have to strengthen the rule of law, but commissions were set up, but what was the final result of this commission? Okay, let's see, you are saying MR period is no better than this period. Okay, then you appointed how many commissions and how many cases were there, but what happened finally? My argument is this, rather than putting this corruption, bribery, this government, let's see. But the commission. present government, even yeah. president visit most of the places. Indeed. And then yeah. he's showing how to strengthen the rule of law. But, so but now these, we are going for a better way. But these commissions, they've had yeah. no, uh, they, had, they didn't have any uh, powers, what do you call them, punitive powers. But they have given recommendation, based on the recommendation, attorney general had the, all these things, evidence, and then come up with a Can you comment on this? Um, be the, the authorities are on the, on the trail of Arjun Mahendran. Do we have to wait for him to be sent back, come back, or can we just proceed with the trial ex parte against him? Good question. You can. That's why I always write articles on this because 22,000 pages are there. And it's clearly show the evidence who are involved. Yeah. Former Prime Minister involved. So the people are there who appointed him. Rather than until, I think Marjuna Mahan is not in Singapore even now, we don't have an extradition agreement. Even last government did a strong mistake. What was that? They didn't even sign the extradition agreement with Singapore. They had enough time. That means but they, they signed the FTA. Chance. They jumped and signed the yeah. FTA. That, that, that's the thing for this. Now, period, you're asking. Some people say five-year period lapse, and therefore you can't file the case. Yeah. Still, you have the time, right? What you have to do, even without the suspect, you can proceed the case. There are certain sections in our law, criminal procedure code, you can continue. But... Still, I have not seen. So they are all waiting to take Arjuna Mahindra's statements. Yeah. And Arjuna Mahindra was here. And who gave the chance for him to flee in this country? Well, that, that's, that, that's, that's, the other pro that's the other point. That's why I'm they, asking. Uh, they established a pattern where uh, Mahindra was coming and going. Yes. And, but he quietly left on one occasion and just didn't bother coming back. And it beggars belief. Now, in the case of Patri Champik, for example, they, they had a travel uh, yeah. ban put, taken out before, mm. even before his arrest, mm. right? So I, I find it absolutely amazing that nobody 
uh, thought it and deemed it fit and proper to stop him from traveling. This is where they had a golden opportunity they missed. Even they didn't take statements from Mr. Mahindra. They could have taken the statement. Then the case was well established. And also you call so-called National Police Commission and others were there. And yeah. even read notice issued and how to arrest him. They, these were some problems. So I think more liberal approach was given by former Prime Minister to Arjuna Mahindra. That's my definition on this. Now then, what do you think? Um, what do you think is the best scenario in terms of these amendments? I mean, I, I see what you say about progress and so on, but you don't have to do away with all that. Yep. And then you're tinkering with the 5% and the 12.5%. Why? You can, you can strengthen the other things, but yes. why, why tinker with this? This is only one aspect. Yeah. But I think rather than putting patches to the Constitution, mm. President Gotabe Rajapaksha can introduce a new constitution. For that, it will take time. So I think this 1978 constitution is fully outdated. And also new Bill of Rights provisions and strengthening the rule of law provisions can come up. So until that, he needs a period. You have to immediately, you can't. Even the new constitution, four and a half years, what happened? Former government. They were having a lot of meetings as well as awareness programs and they say they have produced. Until that, they were not introduced. For rather than this, the best thing is 1996, South African constitution. Likewise, if the new government today, if they can put up and ask from a people mandate, then you can have a good constitution. So I don't like this 1978 constitution until you have to run the system. To run this system only, you need certain amendments to strengthen the parliament. There, uh, there are only a few tweaks, I think, that you need to do. Okay. Uh, the, for example, the people of Sri Lanka, mm. thanks to the 19th Amendment and endorsed thereafter later by the Supreme Court, um, ended up with a fixed term of parliament, four and a half years. Yeah. Nobody asked us, I don't remember anyone asking me, whether we can have a fixed term of parliament. It is a fundamental change in our constitution. And it was sort of, it just happened. The people were not asked about the four and a half year uh, fixed term of parliament. Mm. No one asked for that. Yep. You know, nobody told us. It just happened. Mm. That's because the 19th Amendment was uh, ill thought out and hastily put forward. Because clearly, the prime minister there uh, then wanted all the powers uh, transferred from an elected president to an unelected yeah, uh, or minority prime minister. That's, that's how it was. Because when you see a Rani Wickram Singer, he, he, was, uh, he only had 42 seats at the time when he was first appointed. Yeah. So a lot of loopholes were there like that. Yeah. Appointing the prime minister and removal of CJ, a lot of things I can come up one yeah. by one. The way they did to grab the power. The mistake they have done, they waited for a long time period for the election. In that period, the 100-day program, was it really worked? The 100-day program, what happened in Sri Lanka? No. It was only a test. And thereafter, this 100-day programs further developed to a more corrupted system. That's why people decided to change the system. So therefore, I don't think uh, even at that time the powers were there for the president. But under this new 19th Amendment system, lesser powers are there for the president. But still, the president gave a pledge. The present president gave a pledge to people. Even this power, I will use maximum for the people benefit. So I think all these are private bills, this one. Mm -hmm. And former one also, 1987, was a private bill. Mm -hmm. So rather than taken as a private bill, if the whole house can discuss it, and given the strength, because all the parties today agreed for the executive president. So what is the best thing? Discuss, have a dialogue, and change the system. Other than that, immediately you can't go in. And that you can use election as a good mandate in forthcoming uh, election, general election. And do, do you have these sort of problems in the Caribbean? 
Caribbean countries, these type of systems were not there. Even in the Jamaica constitution, after four years, their time is five year period, after four years, any time the prime minister can call a system. It is not a republic, governor general is there, only 65 seats there in the Jamaica parliament, only two parties are there, Jamaica Labour Party, People National Party. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you are talking about these minorities, there are nothing like that. So only two seats separate in the Jamaica parliament. But, but, but they don't have as many minorities as we have. Yeah, they don't have these minorities, but 90% uh, are Catholics, that system is there. Yeah. But still, there can be some moderate parties can come up, Communist Party, uh, like that. Mm. But still, there is no way to come that. What unites them? Uh, unites them, basically, JLP is a party, even uh, Labour Party, they go with capitalist system. Mm. And People National Party always go with, uh, earlier they were fully supporting with Cuban system, and they go with most of the social welfare line. I thought you were going to say that it is cricket that unifies them. Uh, yes, at the moment, uh, West Indies, <laughs> only a concept. Yeah. There are 17 countries, yeah. so they united in one way cricket yeah. and also sports. That's right. the other one. Well, you know, um, Dr. Pratima, thank you very much thank for you. coming on News 9 Live. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you've taken some time out of your uh, holiday uh, to spend with us here on our network. Uh, please come and uh, join us if you have the yeah. time on our longer program, Face the Nation, for example, uh, where we can fully discuss uh, the issues of majority rule and democracy and Definitely. so on. Um, and uh, and so, uh, I humbly invite yes. you to come with Jones Tea to Caribbean countries. Ah, and Jones Tea. Flavor for this. Cheers to that, I'd say. Thank, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahanama Heva, all the way from the University of Technology in Jamaica in the beautiful West Indies. And that's the way it was on uh, Newsline Live this morning. Take care, have a great day, and of course, God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.